Hello everyone and welcome back to Always Watching. Today I am continuing my coverage for the Tribeca Film Festival with the documentary Hacking Hate. So briefly, Hacking Hate follows investigative journalist Mi Van Grin as she tracks the power of far-right social media influencers. Directed by Simone Claus, this is probably one of my favorite documentaries of the festival and just in general, one of my favorite documentaries I've seen in some time. It explores the role social media companies have in spreading hate and disinformation and how this disinformation and hate can threaten our democracies. To illustrate its point, it uses an organization called the Nordic Federation and its leader, Vincent, to show how an individual or perhaps even a foreign government can take advantage of these platforms to incite violence. I have linked an article in the description box down below that delves deeper into Vincent and this Nordic organization. And I think it's absolutely fascinating. And I would encourage you all to read it. So the documentary pri primarily follows this Swedish journalist as she investigates the effect these far-right influencers and these hate groups are having in our society. With the help of AI, she creates a small right-wing family using her face as a template and starts managing these profiles to gain entry into these different hate groups to show how easily an individual can be radicalized online. What she uncovers, of course, is a world of angry young men who dream of race, war, and terror. And the documentary tries to explain how the rise of violent crime and violent shooting is directly linked to the radicalization of young men online. Eventually, she gains access to an organization called the Nordic Federation and starts to hone in on their leader, Vincent. And the second half of this documentary is basically focuses exclusively on Vincent and whether or not he's just a Nazi leader or a tool being used by foreign governments to disseminate propaganda, disinformation, and, cyber, and encourage cyber warfare. To make its point, the documentary draws on a number of mass shootings, most notably Christchurch, where 51 people were killed, to show that not only are young men being radicalized, but they're actively being encouraged to inflict harm on others. And at face value, a lot of these hate groups and a lot of these far-right social media influencers, they don't seem to have this power to encourage people to inflict violence. However, this is very far from the truth. One of the influencers the documentary highlights is an individual called The Golden One with over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And underneath his workout and nutrition advice is something far sinister. He encourages his members to stand up for themselves. And there's nothing wrong for standing up to yourself, taking care of yourself, working out, you know, like trying to be a better person. However, being a better person does not mean harming others, but being a better person does not mean being hateful towards others. The issue isn't that they're just empowering young men, it's, it's the way they're empowering them, right? It's like they're empowering them to manipulate them to harm others. The documentary interviews a number of representatives from social media companies and asks why is it that these influencers are able to thrive online because a lot of the issue is the fact that people are exposed to this content which makes them a lot easier to radicalize. There's definitely a fine line between censorship and free speech. However, when does someone's right to say horrible things override somebody else's safety? One of the women interviewed in the documentary is a Twitter whistleblower, and yes, I still call it Twitter. I, I refuse to call it X. And she makes the point that how leading up to the Capitol riots, a number of terms were removed from the content moderation guideline, and maybe had these terms not been removed, the riots wouldn't have happened. I think the documentary is trying to make the point that social media companies can play an active role in stopping a lot of these violent acts, but often choose not to, and more so than that, often amplify these hateful voices. I do think there needs to be a conversation about not just angry young men, but like angry people in general, and how it's a lot easier to radicalize individuals in an environment that discourages conversation. I think a lot of these broad points the documentary is making works because they draw these parallels between these social media companies and their policies to the rise of these hate groups online, like the Nordic Federation. In terms of the Nordic Federation, in addition to the usual suspects, like attacking women, uh, 
migrants and all the rest. They also encourage their members to attack political groups. Leader Vincent specifically stresses the importance of military support and encourages young men to arm themselves and get ready for battle if need be. And the increased desire of young men or just people in general wanting to arm themselves is very alarming and it is a threat to democracies because a lot of people are looking for purpose, want to take action and they really want to inspire real change. Like they want to do something. They, they don't want to be just behind a keyboard. So in terms of the Nordic Federation, things start to go horribly wrong when a lot of these groups become infiltrated with Russians and Eastern Europeans who want to channel these hate for their own cause. And a lot of the members in, the, in these groups only care about their countries and purifying their country. So they're like, we don't really know what these people are doing here and why they're not speaking our language. And as the documentary goes on, it really starts to not just focus on the Nordic Federation, but their leader in general. And we start to find out that there's a lot of uh, holes in his story, a lot of hypocrisy, a lot of discrepancies that suggest that he may not be the devout Nazi leader that they believe him to be. And whenever you do look into these individuals that have such extreme views, they're always hypocrites. He's living the exact type of life he discourages his followers to live. It seems like he has a number of children out of wedlock from women of different races. And he just seems like a mess of a person and he has absolutely nothing in common with his followers, which is also a red flag. So if he's not a Nazi, then what is he? Okay, whatever he is or isn't, it almost doesn't matter, but he is a great example of how a single individual can spread hate online and how this hate can be mobilized to incite violence. Now, what the solution is, I'm not really sure. Like the documentary is very specific. Like it draws on these extreme moments of violence, these mass shootings, to show how social media could have played a role in discouraging this type of violence, whether it be on Capitol Hill or in New or what happened in New Zealand. And it also makes the case that not only are social media companies not doing enough, but they are the reason that a lot of these hate groups are gaining traction online. I think media literacy would definitely help. Like we spend more time online than we do outside. So it's very easy to become exposed to hateful content and become convinced by it. And it's very easy to get sucked into discourse that literally has no bearing on reality. And I feel like there's a gap in the market because people don't really trust mainstream media. So they're using YouTube and Twitter and all these social media platforms to get their news, right? To get information. And they're looking for individuals like Vincent to follow, someone that really makes them feel like they have purpose, like they, they can take action, that they can help them change their life. But whose job it is to monitor the Vincents of the world, I'm not really sure. Saying controversial things online doesn't mean you're telling the truth. And, and a lot of these far-right influencers are grifting Right? There is a space for saying incredibly hateful things and making money off of it and gaining power or, or whatever it is their true motivations are. But this is a fascinating documentary and it, it will have you contemplating your social media feed. Like we do know that the things that we're exposed to is not by accident. Now, how much of this content is affecting our society and impacting our safety like that is a whole other question. So you guys let me know what you think and until next time.